passed away. We wanted men. Try this again for like the umpteenth time. We've only been at this for like 15 minutes and my internet keeps crapping out and I don't know why my internet gets, keeps crapping out. So if anybody knows why my internet keeps crapping out on me. Maybe your internet needs to wake send up. Send me a message and I'll fix it. But welcome to the Smugglers Galaxy podcast. Wake up. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, anyway, you ever heard that song, Jason, by Chop Suey? By yeah, I have. I've heard it. Wake up. Don't forget to put out your makeup. Are you frozen again, Glenn? This is going to happen. He's going to pop in and out of this episode. With us today is Narayan, the king of swag. Narayan, how are you this morning? Oh, pretty good, guys. We're doing better than Glenn because uh, he keeps popping in and out. Well, what I'm going to do, I know I got Zoom on my phone. It's going to sound like ass. I don't want to do it. You think if I go upstairs, it'll connect better get close to my get closer to my do you have like a direct line you can plug into your computer i don't that, that right there is your problem well i'm all the way downstairs now it's saying i'm connected yeah we can hear you loud and clear and then you probably just went out again Well, Glenn, if you can hear us, go up to your uh, Wi-Fi router and get as close to that thing as you can. And we'll keep running here. Ryan, have you picked anything up this week? Uh, no, I, I don't even have time to like <laughs> go shop these days. <laughs> There's always yeah. deals I'm happening with individuals on Facebook and stuff like yeah. that. But uh, um, right now I'm trying to just clean up the basement and get everything ready for celebration so yeah. do you have like piles of swag all over that table tennis uh, no it, it's it's just stuff that you know has kind of come in over the last few months and just i've never put it in place so <laughs> it's just been it's just been you know set aside there until i can like have time for it uh, or take some you know photos of it or something but but i was able to get some progress done on that um most of the swag has left the building, so to speak. Um, oh, okay. But um, yeah, I'm still packing my suitcases. So, But yeah, it should be, most of it should be in. Um, I still have to figure out some of the more kind of expensive items, exactly how to pack those, like the, some of the items for the charity raffles. Yeah. Just to make sure they don't get damaged. Um, and I have to ship a couple boxes for the, the club table that I'll, I'll probably do on Thursday. Nice. I've uh, finished the, um, the Plinko board and I have it together for tonight because tonight I'm hosting a meetup at my place. But after tonight, I'm going to disassemble it and get it ready for shipping. It's just going to be in a suitcase, but I'm going to pad that with um, some foam and stuff so it doesn't break during shipment. Or, or nice packaging over there. I picked up a ton of stuff this week as if I wasn't going to a convention in a week and a half. And Glenn found um it's a, a they're called stitchlings. They're supposed to be like the the handmade uh, characters you get at Galaxy's Edge, but they're at uh, Target. And it was a salacious crumb and he's got a little voice box. <laughs> That's I did like he was sick. Oh, now I can house. hear it. Yeah. I just go around the house pressing that. I found the Death Watch Trooper Black Series at Target. And I picked that up for someone else, but then they said they already found one, so I'm just holding on to that. Wait, is that the retro one? No, that's the Black Series one. The Wait, uh, Death. Oh, Death Watch, the Death Mandalorian. Watch. Yeah, the Sorry, blue one. I'm thinking Death Trooper. Okay. Oh. And then I found... 
I went out looking for that droids Boba Fett because that's hitting target. And I found an R2. So I picked that up and then it canceled my R2, my pre-order. So now I have that. And then yesterday, Glenn went to Target, actually near my work, and he found a Boba Fett. They had them all in the back. They weren't putting them on the uh, store shelves. Typical. So, yeah. So I went yeah. at lunchtime, and I was like, hey, I've got this. Or, I know that you guys have this. Can you grab one for me? And they went and pulled one out. So I have that. I still have my pre-order because I'm, I'm sure that's going to be difficult to find. And if I can help someone else find or get one, I'm just going to hold on to my pre-order and then sell it at cost at some point. Can you guys hear me now? I can Am hear you. Yes. yes. You know, that George Boba Fett, well, other than this internet thing really effing with me this morning, that George Boba Fett was really annoying to try to find. Why? Because every time I'd go, you, you, you'd, you'd check a store and they'd be like, well, it's at this store. You know, they don't have any here. And then you go to, you'd look at it and it was like five other stores would have it. And then when you go to one of those five other stores, they'd be out. And then finally yesterday, I, I was walked into a Target and there was some guy checking, which he joined the club now, but he was looking at talking to the guy and I'm hearing him talking about droids. And I'm like, are you guys wanting the Boba Fett? And I was like, yes. I said, grab me one too. So I got it that way. Nice. But it took me like a week to find that son of a gun. What do you, what do you think of that figure? Um, I, I, I think it's cool. I haven't looked at it that much or just kind of threw it in a case and then put it in my in my uh, in my case but i haven't haven't spent a lot of time looking for it i just wanted it because it was a bubba fett yeah, yeah i love the, the the artwork um the yeah. figure i think they could have kit bashed a little better but i know it's just essentially a repaint of the return of the jedi um fat they just released yeah. but um i'm not complaining i'm glad it even got released Right. You, well, we all know how how Hasbro loves a good repaint. Yeah. They love to be lazy. <laughs> I, I thought the R2 is great, though. Um, I thought that was perfect. Yeah. That looks good. C3PO looks good, too. Yep. I mean, I, the wish only... they didn't, I, the, the wish they didn't use that removable panels mold, but that's okay. Yeah, he looks really weird with the blue on the inside. Yeah. What do you mean on the inside? Because he's the C-3PO that you could take apart and then make it look like the episode one C-3PO underneath. And then you can, I think it's an episode two mold, isn't it? They were that late. I think it was that? released with the Empire Strikes Back um, vintage collection oh. wave. Oh, okay. So it's originally, but I don't know why they, the, the panel thing, it, it, it doesn't look bad, but, um, yeah, the panels look a little wonky. Yeah. It just looks weird blue. It looks like a blue man group. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. I don't listen to blue man group. Apparently. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's not what the blue man group sound like. The more <laughs> percussion. Oh. Yeah. So, so any, uh, I, uh, any news, Jason? Any news? I got tons of news. Tons of news. Ahsoka started principal photography on Monday. Yeah. I thought that was in April, but apparently it's just this week. Well, if you think about if they were doing production versus pre-production versus shooting are two totally different things. I mean, you could be making sets and all that stuff and it can still be considered production, but you're just making sets. You're not really shooting anything. Right. It's still exciting. Rebel season five is on its way. I want. I just wonder what who wears a cowboy hat. Yeah, Filoni's probably directing the first episode. That's his. That's his character. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't like letting her go. Do we know how many episodes that will be? Um, uh, no clue. I, I I'm assuming know. eight. I'd like to see like fifteen, but you know, you're not gonna get that. Yeah, I wonder if it's six or eight. Well, here's what, what I find interesting about that whole thing because, you know, there, I guess, is Hayden rumored to be in it? Yeah, he is in it. He is in it. But, um, you know, he's going to be at Celebration. Well, no, he's not going to be at Celebration. So maybe that's why we're not getting Hayden at Celebration. But then Dave Filoni is going to be at Celebration. So I guess he freed himself up. Maybe. So that may be why we're not going to get um, any of that crew at Celebration because they're recording. Anybody can fly in for one day and leave. Right. Yeah, it is Disney. 
The but interesting. I, I feel like Hayden will be there, and they haven't announced. That. I think there's a surprise panel Saturday morning. There's yeah, nothing be, in that slot. Yeah, there's nothing there. They haven't announced any pre-show or, or viewing party for Obi Wan. There's no Obi Wan panel, and you would think this is the Obi Wan celebration. I mean, that's the prime slot too for all of celebration. Is that Saturday morning time slot? Mm -hmm. So the fact that they left it empty tells me that there's there's something in the works there. You mean they did something right, unlike the Tales of the Jedi? But they're a week and a half out, and they still I know. haven't it's, announced. It's still anything. annoying. <laughs> it's like what we are you doing? No, we have no lotteries yet. Maybe that's exactly why the lotteries are being tweaked. It's a good thought. Well, Hayden is 41 years old, the same age as Darth Vader in A New Hope. So if Anakin never fell to the dark side, uh, that's what he would look like. That's an interesting fact. Wow. Did you see his look in the, uh, the promo stills for the, uh, the show? For Obi-Wan? Yeah. I guess those pictures in London on the rooftop. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I, I like that uh, jacket he's wearing. It's got like the... the Vader inspired. In, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, you, you know, at least um, Ian McGregor will, will still... Or not Ian. He has it. Obi-Wan. Huh? Ewan. Hugh, Hugh and McGregor. Dude, I knew how... Everybody knows. They're yelling at me right now. At least he has the higher pants. <laughs> <laughs> the Pee Wee Herman pants. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Hayden was talking to Total Film Magazine, and he said regarding the uh, fights, the lightsaber fights were more in line with the prequels than we are with the fights in the original trilogy. The characters have aged, but not that much. Most of my work is on this project was preparation. The physical preparation was intense. I had to put on a decent amount of weight and size to fill up the suit. He's a 100% fully realized Vader. Wow. Okay, I, I was not expecting a lot of duels in this, but yeah, that's I think, interesting. I think they're on par with uh, uh, episode three. I think it's like a full out rematch between the two. So I guess the big speculation is: Does he know he's the man in the suit at, ahead of time? I think he figures it out. I mean, he's probably feeling I, the presence he hasn't felt. Right, and I guess he. He knows Anakin is Darth Vader, the name, right? I, I don't know. I don't know how to... I thought that. that was in the holo recording from the Jedi Temple. You see him attacking, and you know he's turned to the dark side. I just don't know. I mean... No, but when suspect. the Emperor... I don't know if they have audio from that recording. But yeah. the Emperor basically says, I'll call you Darth Vader, or I'll... Yeah, but that was in his own Senate chamber, so I don't know if that was recorded. It's just there's a lot there that are that could be open for interpretation, which is probably good if you're a showrunner and you need some leeway. Yeah, I think that's sort of the the main thing on that show is when when is he going to figure that out? Yeah. That's going to be an incredible part. That's probably going to be like a cliffhanger for the next episode. The realization that, oh my gosh, this is Anakin. I, I really think they're going to build it up and build it up because when the, uh, the sister, whichever her name is, the one without the mask on is yelling, you know, you can't run from him, Obi-Wan. She's got to be talking about Vader. So they're, well, they I all think work for Vader, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. they do. I think they're going to build that up at least through – we're not going to see Vader or, you know, that duel till probably episode four or five, if not episode six. I would suspect we see Vader um, as a tease at the end of episode two. That's my prediction. Yeah. And then episode three might be like a cameo appearance. But, yeah, towards the end, we're going to get more Vader. You think we'll see him without the helmet? Yes. Yep. We have to with Hay with Hayden playing them. There's no need for them to have Hayden in there without, you know, if they're going to have him masked up. My question is: Have they brought back James Earl Jones? Or are they going to use that voice synth synthesis technology and recreate James oh, Earl Jones? Jesus, no, I'm they need to bring. Sure, him. they will. Which one, synthesis. Ryan? The I think they'll use the synthesis. Yeah, because he's James Earl Jones sounded very old in Rogue One. 
Yeah, it it sounded a little off. Um, he just he sounded so. his age. Sounded but I guess like they could man. do both. They could have him record lines and still kind of de-age the voice. I guess. Yeah. I don't know how that works, but. Uh, and then the other two, I have two more pieces of news, and then we can jump into swag talk. There's a new Hallmark ornament. Did you see that this week, Lynn? The Razor Crest? Yeah. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, you already have it? Yeah, it was their May the 4th uh, or- ornament release. That's I forgot that I got that, too. That came in, okay. like, really fast. I forgot about it. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's 35 bucks. Is it still available? I guess. <laughs> I, what was here's what i haven't seen it and i, I don't really want to go looking right now because i don't want to disrupt my internet but like right after they released it on may the 4th it was 35 dollars, and then like the next day yak face had posted that amazon had it for 40 percent off so it was like 20 dollars within a day i think yeah but yeah i had ordered it from hallmark.com and i got you know, it came in fairly quick but yeah that had uh yeah Though I'm not real happy with the ornaments this year, but that's just me being personal. It doesn't seem like there's any like real awesome ornaments except for the razor crest, and then you've got the Dinjar and holding the child, you know, without the the end of uh, Mandalorian season two, that that moment. Yeah. And you know, it's it. They are right this year. I'll probably still get a couple of them. My wife's excited because they did an ET ornament, so we'll have to buy that one. And then the other piece of news I have, and this one I'm really excited about, this was reported on Jedi News. Um, Toy Fair UK was happening, and Jazzwares had this new line of Star Wars toys. They're going to be at Celebration, so I'm very excited to check this out, and I'm sure they're going to have this thing. They currently own the Micro Machines brand, and it looks like they're going to bring it back, but they're not exactly bringing it back as it was. They're unveiling this thing called the Star Wars Micro Galaxy Collection or Squadron, and it's It's miniature-sized vehicles, but they're all in scale with one another. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that would be nice. So, like, the Millennium Falcon will be... So, they have uh, seven, six different class ships. There's the Assault class, which is the Millennium Falcon and similar-sized vehicles. The Starship class, which is larger vehicles, including Boba Fett's Starfighter Fire Spray, or Slave One in the Razor Crest. Say it, say it, Jason. Slave One. Slave One. <laughs> I'm reading this from uh, Jedi News. Uh, transport class, including the troop transport. So it's going to be a little bit smaller. Um, the Starfighter class, X Wing, Jedi Starfighter, TIE Bomber, light armor class vehicles, TIE Fighters, ATSTs, and other similar modes of transportation. And then the Scout class, which includes like speeder bikes and like a single person um, transport. And there's um no one's really gotten close or nobody's taken photos and held one so they're not sure if it's plastic or die cast but like you know i would imagine the atst is the same size as the cockpit to the millennium falcon so that would be in scale with each other and that's just really a cool idea they've never really done scaled vehicles like that even for some of the um uh the role-playing games there's the x-wing game and those aren't exactly in scale to one another the only thing is, like, you can't do a blockade runner or star destroyer or Death Star, but those are just way too big. Yeah, that'd be Man, cool. out here I was hoping to see a, uh, you know, uh, executor or executor <laughs> class star destroyer. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, you could put that in your driveway. <laughs> yeah, that thing's gonna be huge. But yeah, I'm excited to see that now at Celebration. That's definitely a booth I got to check out. You're going to be one of those guys and be like, look at all the prototypes I have of these guys, of the old school ones. No. Should I? Maybe. Oh, no. That's not my style. But, yeah, so that's all the news I have. Did you have anything? Um, only thing I've got is our local uh, Toy Lana, Joe Lana show that uh, is in March every year. They decided to split up the shows because uh, – Toy Lana started off as Joe Lana 20 years ago, which was a mainly G.I. Joe show, 12-inch scale G.I. Joe stuff. And they have uh, recently, they've split the shows because it's become more of a pop culture, you know, a lot of Star Wars, a lot of other brands come in. Uh, So they've decided to split the shows up and then do a G.I. Joe 
only show, which is going to be uh, September 9th through 11th. And then they're going to do a Toylanta show, which is going to be everything else, uh, March 24th through 26th. Uh, and they moved them to the uh, Hyatt Atlanta in, uh, shoot, Sorry. Powder Springs, not Powder Springs. What, yeah. What's, where are it's you? It's in Peach Street Corners. Peach Street Corners. So I know it's you're excited about it in the Ryan. I think it's a Sheraton though, right? I, I, I think, well, it said it's, Hilton, but maybe I'm wrong. It's, I think it's that building that you can see from like a distance. It's like on a hill. So I call it the castle. Okay. Yeah. But I know you're excited, Ryan, because it's finally close to you. Yeah. I'm, I think it's a good move that they split the shows. Um, okay. I think it'll give a little more breathing room for non-Joe um, lines. Um, I mean, that, but now I guess they have two sets of schedules to fill. But yeah. um, I don't know. Nice. I think it that could be a great opportunity for Star Wars to be, you know, a big part of the, the March show. I better Mount not Hulk. see a single Joe at the Toylanda show. If they're going to separate the Joes out. My assumption was that Joe Lana was going to be 12 inch Joes, but then I got corrected that it's going to also be the three and three quarter Joes and it's going to be action man. And so, uh, yeah, there better not be a single Joe at Toy Lana, like you said, because I was being sarcastic. I'm sure they're going to be there, but at the same time, it's like <laughs> they're throwing a fit that they don't want their star Wars toys at their army man toy show. Right. You know, so, I mean, maybe, I, maybe they were feeling crowded out. Well, what it what my understanding was they didn't they wanted to have the jo the Joe guys wanted to have a room all to themselves at Toy Lana, and it didn't work out that way because the room that they could have done that in was the only room that they could put booths in, and they couldn't you know you couldn't do both so that's why they ended up splitting the shows up so we'll see um, yeah. We'll see. I'm excited for it. You know, it does, it does kind of leave a void and I'm hoping that the, you know, the club can, can fill that void for the toy Lana and get some star Wars stuff in there. Awesome. I know I've been, I've been, I've been in the background trying to push that, push that button. So we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll know more next couple of weeks. Awesome sauce. Now, now I, before we get into celebration swag, um, I just, do you guys, does it trouble you guys that you see a lot of people selling their celebration badges? No. Should okay. it? I don't um, know. I just. I think this is the time that they would because they receive them in the mail. Right. I've just, I've never noticed, or maybe I've just never paid attention, but it just seems like every time I open up Facebook, there's four or five people selling their badges. Yeah. It makes and me I've wonder. Messaged, uh, go ahead. No, it just makes me wonder, like, is it going to be packed or is there a lot of people just decide they can't go all of a sudden see I that's think a lot I'm of these curious. people have already decided that they either and not always is the is it that the person that's selling it is they're the one not going but it might be their friends or family that they bought tickets for and they just need to get rid of those and they just needed to wait for all the badges to arrive yeah, I've noticed that a lot of the podcasts I listen to, they were all gun ho about it. And I'd probably say two or three of the podcasts that I listen to are like, we're not going. Or like half the hosts aren't going this year. So I'm just, I'm curious, curious how well attended this celebration. I know it'll be well attended, but are we going to get a, a half ass celebration this year because they've, they're rushing it? Or is it, I'm sure it'll still be awesome, but how will it compare to other celebrations? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I would assume the next celebration we, is, is going to be the return to normal. That, there you go. That's the best way to put it, Jason. I think that's the best way to put it. Well, I think if the communication on the exhibitor side is any indication, I feel like they, yeah, it's, it's going to be everything last minute. Um, yeah. But honestly, I bet that's not really why I'm going. They, they can do what they want with the big panels and all the exhibits, but as long as I can see a lot of my friends and we can hang out and have fun, that's, that's what celebration is for me. Yeah. Well, every time I turn around, there's something new going on, Ryan. So how will you sleep? He's not going what? to You don't sleep. sleep. <laughs> don't sleep at celebration. I hate hearing that. <laughs> 
<laughs> what I loved sleep. is there was a show where go, there's a, a after party on Thursday night, and it uh, <laughs> we're looking at it on uh, Eastern time, and it's set up for Pacific, Pacific time. So it's yeah. like set up our time at midnight, and Jason's freaking out, going, "What happened to this party?" And we're like. They're like, dude, it'll, it'll be all right. But then in my mind, I'm going, crap, it'll be midnight our time. I will have to get up at, we're already better up at five to get to the airport. Better sleep on the plane. Oh my God. We'll see. Hopefully I can make it. In. Maybe I can make it for a half hour to that party. <laughs> <laughs> but once you're there, it's all, you know, adrenaline. It's adrenaline, man. It's, a, yeah. It's something. Yeah. And then Thursday, I think, yeah, Thursday, I think is going to be our hardest day because we'll have to, you know, I, I think that's the day that, you know, to get in early and do all the, oh, do all the stuff we want to do, get that, get our stuff out the way, and then we can go have fun. Yeah. So, Narayan, when was the first time, let's do a quick recap, you saw Swag at Celebration. The first time I saw Swag at Celebration? Yeah. Um, if you're counting fan-made swag, yeah, I would say Celebration Five. Um, you know, I attended Celebration Two and then missed Three and Four, um, and then went to Five and saw a little bit of it there. Um, and I learned about some of the kind of official swag as well, as to, just as I was leaving Celebration Five. Okay, I think we were eating in the food court, and somebody had a set of the cereal boxes from the collecting track. And I just inquired about them. Love at first sight. Yes. And I was like, wait, there's a collecting track. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I had missed it entirely. Um, and then the next Celebration 6, we pretty much spent half our time there. And we only went for two days in Celebration 6. I think we went late Friday and then Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we're pretty much in that collecting track area most of the time. And we somehow managed to complete a set of star tots just in two days time because me and my son, uh, both of my sons were there. So we each got three tots from each panel that we attended that we traded to complete that. Nice. Now, but there was definitely some there. For Celebration 6, there was definitely a lot more. And then every, every Celebration since, it's kind of exponentially increased. So Celebration 2, did you go to room sales? No, I didn't even know. Okay. Um, Cause that's the one them. where the proof showed up, right? It was either two or three, I believe, but okay. yeah, I was, um, I have family in Indianapolis, so we were staying with them. So I would just basically gotcha. go in for the day and, uh, I had no, I was just really not connected at that point. I don't think even, I was even on rebel scum yet. So that was 2002, I believe celebration two. But yeah, that was what I remember from that is getting a lot of autographs and getting that George Sakul figure, which took half the time I was there. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. That's the tough one to find? No. <laughs> it was just a long so line. everybody was doing. Everybody was in line for that exclusive George Sakul figure, Jeez. X-Wing pilot. Is that the one with the mini X-Wing in it? Yeah. The yes. micro machine. Micro yeah. machines. Sorry, Jason, to upset you. No, it's a micro machine. <laughs> so this celebration, the Georgia Alliance uh, came back from what? Celebration Chicago. And they saw the Beer Patch group. And they decided we need to do something like that as a group. And you guys, I wasn't part of this conversation. You guys thought maybe because it's the 40th anniversary of empire strikes back and wilbur hood was in that we can do ice cream patches a different flavor ice cream is that an accurate description of what happened yeah so we had a meetup um celebration i believe was in april chicago um mm -hmm. april of 2019 and then we had a meetup in early may and uh you know we had a fairly successful kind of swag offering in chicago but nothing you know Nothing like coming some of the extensive kind of beer sets or, or you know other themed patch sets that were out there, and so we were already thinking a little bigger because uh, we had already decided okay next time we definitely need to get a table, and we need to up our swag game um, to kind of match these sets that everybody's talking about, 
And I think Justin may have come up with the idea for ice cream because we were just brainstorming at that, um, at that meetup. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we came up with that name and it was at that point, it, that's all it was just a name, you know, Will Rohood's best Finest, finest kind of a take on the, uh, um, you know, the uh, Ben and Jerry's um, ice cream. And, you know, we had no idea how we'd come up with flavors or characters or exactly how it would look. But, um, you know, so that's, that's where that came up. I think at the same time, you know, we were trying to come up with ideas for other conventions. I think that the Jack Daniels set was also kind of in um, development at that point as well. So, but yeah, that May meetup right after Celebration Chicago um, was the genesis of that, that particular project. And remember, we only had a year turnaround. So we had right. to really think quickly. Um, at that point, we're thinking it's August 2020, that everything has to be ready. So a large set like that, we would have had to start right, you know, fairly quickly with planning. Right. And yeah, I just remember it being kind of a whirlwind, that whole, the whole patch set and being in the chat and, and you know, everybody talking about what, what flavors we could do. And it was, you know, a couple of days we, you know, it, it was a fairly quick turnaround on it. Yeah. So you came up yeah, with 12 flavors. Correct. I think the first part, the, the most difficult part initially was, um, yeah, coming up with which characters we would use. We knew we wanted to Empire Strikes Back because it was going to be the 40th anniversary. And, um, yeah, so we had to narrow down exactly what we want. I think we picked the 12 number because that's how many beer patches there were. And we were thinking we were going to do like an after, you know, an archive party patch because a lot of us would be attending that. And of course, a sponsor and a volunteer patch. Um, and so that was the first thing was kind of character selection. At the same time, I think we were trying to figure out which artists to go with. Um, and we were kind of looking at different artists work as to who made good designs for patches because we really wanted something that was going to be special and different. And uh, uh, luckily I think we settled on a great artist and uh, who's, who really brought this thing to life. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was Richard Gonzalez, who's well known in the 501st circles. He's made a lot of patches for the 501st groups around the world. And um, he just, he just uh, took some of our ideas and, and really, you know, brought into reality. Right. And, and just to, to kind of say the, the power of that swag, uh, I, I, a patch set, this guy's already what gotten two or three other groups uh, approaching him to do swag for next celebration. Who's this Richard? Yeah. Uh, Richard does like, he does probably a hundred different patch designs each oh, wow. celebration. So he's, he's busy even before we got. Oh, okay. Uh, I got you. I got you. So he's a well-known, um, artist for patches and I think we had narrowed it down to a few artists and I think we finally voted on it and um, there were a few designs from Chicago that I really liked of his and you know for the I think we kind of wanted a cartoony imagery for our patches and I think he was really good at that and uh, but yeah I had no like I said it was the designs, we, were, we weren't even sure exactly what this whole thing was going to look like. Um, but yeah, I, I worked with him and, you know, I think we went through several iterations of the, the, at least the template design. And then um, a lot of the character designs, he probably got on the first or second try. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I just gave him some ideas of, as to what, you know, I wanted in this image. But, and a lot of, you know, half of it was his creativity. For sure. Slice cream is one of my favorites because it's one thing to have, you know, like your hand cut off, but the, the reaction on Luke's face, like, Ugh. it's just it, the cartoon, <laughs> the cartoon nature of these patches just kind of takes it to the next level. Like even carbonite crunch, like Han was being frozen in carbonite with his tongue out, like about to lick the ice cream. It's just like, come on, man, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it. And I love the colors, uh, the, the variety of the colors that he used as well. Uh, they really pop. And 
you know, they just definitely stand out. But that wasn't all. You had to uh, make the Carillion Caramel Patch Party, uh, Archive Party Patch, which is not happening. So it's going to be not available at the Archive Party. It'll be available everywhere else. But then you made the uh, pint. No, it's the quart. It's the quart, Jason. You did that last time. Yeah. So that was, that was a, you know, I think when we, we started getting, you know, people interested in sponsoring this project, and there were already a ton because a lot of people liked what we did in Chicago. And so they were on board, whatever we were doing. Um, and I think just having like, what we had like 24 sponsors, you know, we, it was amazing the level of creativity in that chat that we came up with all sorts of ideas to tie into the ice cream theme. And one of the early ideas I think was to have a container, like a, a quart container that basically would contain all the patches. And I remember, you know, looking online to see, okay, how many can I buy in bulk? And actually it was relatively cheap. I didn't realize, but we, we've got a ton of these and uh, they've been taking up space in my closet for two years. <laughs> so all these pints of ice cream, or sorry, all these quarts of ice cream um, containers. And yeah, so the next step was thinking, okay, do these, are these going to fit the patches? Are these, what are we going to do for the, you know, the, the deco on these containers. Um, and yeah, somehow all these things got sorted out and became a reality. And um, I, I'm still looking back at it thinking, how did we pull this off? Um, because I mean, got, yeah, it was, it started off from like, you know, a couple ideas. You got like left so, coast graphics to like print the court um, yeah. stickers. Yeah, Richard did the artwork for the, the pint and did all the kind of the vector design to make sure it, the curve of it, you know, fit the container. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Left Coast printed it on high quality vinyl in his shop, um, you know, at a relatively inexpensive price for us. And I, I, it, it, I mean, he just knocked it out of the park, how, how good those look. And very few people have actually seen those in person, but I mean, they it's like waterproof vinyl yeah. uh, on labels and they look really good in, in hand. So I think people will be, people have seen pictures of our set, but when they actually see it in hand, and a lot of people have said this when they've seen the patches uh, and had a chance to hold them and seen the container, um, it's a lot better than what the pictures show. Yep. Yeah, it's Absolutely. definitely top high quality stuff. Um, now, now, Ryan, do you think, the two year lapse between 19, you know, celebration moving two years, is that helped or hurt the uh, situation? As far as the patch set, I mean, setting the patch set up and having the two years, do you think it's given you time, us time to breathe or is it hurt? You know what I mean? Is it, I don't it think it's hurt us. And I, I was a little afraid that that would, um, because I think unlike a lot of groups, we started a lot earlier. Um, then I think a lot of people did and simply because of we had never done a project like this before and so we didn't know the logistics of how quickly things would actually get done and so we had most of the design work um, you know over the fall and winter of that year and I was literally every time Richard and I settled on the design and uh, we approved it I sent it to the studio for patch production. So we were doing production and design at the same time, you know, for many months in a row. And, uh, you know, of course, um, we were like down to like the last two or three patch designs by spring of 2020. And of course that's when, you know, COVID was hitting China and their factories were shutting down and, it was like, I think we got to the 10th patch and then the last two patches and we still hadn't done the bonus ones yet. Um, they were just, you know, the, 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 the factory samples came back really bad because they were shifting from different factories than the one they usually used. And I was getting really worried that we'd have to shift our patch production to a completely different place. And you know how that is, then you worry about the uniformity of the patches and how they look. Um, and, yeah, so I was at that point, I was like, you know what, Let, if we can get to finish this now, let's just do it now. 
And so when those factories opened up, we um, got our, all our last designs made and got got everything done. In, we would have had everything ready in time for, for if uh, Anaheim actually happened in August 2020. Um, but obviously it didn't. Um, but I was worried a little bit about losing momentum there. But the fact that, you know, when we've relaunched kind of the whole promotion of this, it's still been received very well. And um, yeah, I, I, I think we'll be, I think we'll still be good. I, I'm, I'm amazed at the momentum, like you were, you were mentioning momentum that this patch set has gotten. Cause uh, I mean, we've had, you know, we've offered several patches through the patch sets through the club, uh, you know, they either raise money for the club or raise money for CHOA. We've done auctions. We've, it's been a, a very good, a promotional item, uh, you know, fundraiser for the club. And every time you put a patch set out there, it, it snatched up immediately. So the momentum of these things have been crazy. Yeah. And I think, you know, certainly the collector groups that we're parts of, you know, they've received it very well um, and our swag groups, but beyond that, I mean, I think the whole Wilro hood, theme of this set has kind of reached out to a lot of the costuming groups, especially the whole Wilrow Hood detachment of, you know, of the Rebel Legion, which has become almost kind of a force in it of itself at Celebration now. Uh, and they have kind of taken this patch set to heart as well. And they bought a lot of our kind of t-shirts as well. And uh, yeah, I was just, I had not joined some of these kind of other costuming groups until very recently. And I was just looking back through some of their old posts and how, you know, they've been kind of following this set for a while. And even since 2020, when they first saw pictures of it, you know, they've been talking about it for, for a long time and been anticipating it. So um, we may have a lot of, you know, other people besides our usual collecting groups coming to look for this set. Yeah. So it's so good and bad. If, yeah, be warned if you're a sponsor. Yeah. I think I think our sponsors will be have to have security detail. <laughs> how, did, how did you find sponsors? Um, so, you know, it's a combination of members here that were interested and also members that approached, or basically different um, friends and collectors that approached me after Chicago. Mm. And they liked some of our designs from Chicago and they said, we'd like to be part of whatever you're doing going forward. And again, they just had faith that I guess they had faith in our designs that, that we would come up with something good. And, um, I had no guarantee that we would, but, um, we, um, and of course, of course they all contributed to this project and that's, they, they all have made great swag in the past as well. So they came with their, um, contribution to the project so i think it's 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 been a great project because of that collaboration you know there's a lot of great people that have made great creative swag in the past that's that have been part of this project and uh you know i i, I as much credit as people like to give me for this this has been a big group effort and um, i couldn't have done it with all all the rest of the people that have been part of this what's the most challenging uh, uh, aspect of this patch set for you? What has been the most challenging? Um, the most challenging has been just to keep it within costs. Um, you know, because you know me, I love to just kind of keep <laughs> expanding this project. No um, way. As no, much as you? I can. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like every and, time we turn around, there's something new for this project, Narayan. But <laughs> yeah. And I think we, we did come up with a good cost structure initially because you don't want to make it too expensive that nobody can really sponsor. At the same time, you don't want to, um, you know, having to fund the project late, you know, when you realize that it costs more than you thought it would. Um, but yeah, and then again, we had not done this before, so it was we were kind of flying a little blind. There were a few people in in our sponsor group that had done this scale of project, so I leaned them leaned on them a lot initially to figure out price structure. Um, but I think it worked out well, and um, 
And I think we worked out a good system as to what would be included as part of the sponsor set. And then we would have other items that would be separate buy-ins that would you know, not be, not you know, increase the overall cost, but whoever was interested in these premium items, they could just, we would do a group buy to keep the cost down, but they would not be part of the initial buy-in. Yeah. So, um, but the heart that that was i think part of it and and the, the other part was just getting the initial the last few patches made was um was a bit nerve-wracking you know during that early covid time um because i was worried that the patch sets may not the, the different patches at the end may not look like the ones from the beginning mm. um and i would say this the the initial designs and kind of working with a company to make a patch from a design took a lot longer than I thought. I thought it would be very simple. I'd give them a design, they come back with a patch and that's it. But there's really a lot of back and forth to try to figure out exactly what works and what doesn't, especially with colors and, um, you know, the thickness of, thread that's used on the uh, the patches and so forth so but once we got through the first few patches that i knew i knew what to kind of um do to solve those problems and so it took a lot less uh, time to get the remaining ones done mm -hmm. are you comfortable talking about pricing on these patches or, or you know to give people out there that have no clue what what a you know a sponsorship cost um, we can, I can't, the, the problem is I, I'm not sure I have those numbers straight off the top of my head. Our, I mean, point. just give me a roundabout um, number. I mean, I know we've, we were trying to figure it out last week, but you know, we, we weren't sure. I mean, if you could just, what's an average cost, you know, what average cost of a sponsorship, if you were to do, I believe it was in the 400 range. Um, okay. and that was for a full sponsor. Um, how, how many patches did you get with that? So that you would be getting uh for our project you would be getting three full sets um and uh also the, the patches that you would distribute so that would be about 150 patches okay so you get 75 or you get 150 if you were a full sponsor you so get a lot what happened was that there were so many people interested that we actually split up every patch design into two co-sponsors so even though there were 12 base patches, there were actually 24 sponsors because so many people were interested and I want to admit, include everybody who really expressed interest in those early days. So there, we don't actually literally have a full sponsor. Everybody is a co-sponsor right. for each of these patches. But my, I guess my question is in total for one singular patch, is it 150 patches or 300? For what we distribute, it's 150. Of obviously, okay. more have to be made to include the sponsor sets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm so. on board. Gotcha. I thought you would have said something like the uh, two years since we've made the patches, everyone nagging you to say, "Hey, can I have a set?" I thought that would be the most challenging aspect. But maybe that's <laughs> just me. That, that that actually has happened more in the last few months, more oh, so really? than in the last two years. Um, I think, yeah, no one's really bothered me for the last two years about the set. Um, but yeah, I think it's, um, and then I think that's the most difficult part because we all have a limited number of sets. And so we have to figure out like, what do we really want to trade for? Or what, what sets do we want? Yeah. Um, but I, th I, th I think it'll all work out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just, more than anything, I'm just glad it's received well and that, um, and that, you know, we'll, we'll, the, the biggest part about swag is getting to know other people. And we've already gotten to know a lot of people just making this project. We're going to get to know a lot, a lot more people uh, distributing them. Mm -hmm. So, and what do you have your eyes on for swag at celebration this year? Let's talk about the, the convention as a whole. What are you excited about? Yeah. So I'm, um, the one thing I was a little worried about was since they didn't announce a lot of the celebration details until maybe January of this year, that, you know, there'd be a very um, 
quick run up for a lot of people to make swag. So I'm almost worried that there'd be not as much swag as previous years. Um, but the last few months tell me that's probably not been the case. There's, there's been, there's plenty uh, out there. Um, and what's caught my eye? Um, let's see. So um, there's just right off the top of my head, um, the third iteration of the Brewer resets looks incredible again, uh, now with Empire Strikes Back theme characters. Um, the, um, the sets that I think Vin, Vinny and Michael Tricomi have made um, are personal favorites of mine. So I think they've been involved with, uh, I think of, of the three that they're involved with, uh, and I assume they're the coordinators, I don't wanna um, give credit to whoever's in, in charge of those, but I, I believe they are the coordinators of, of those three. Uh, the center, the Empire Strikes Back centerpiece set, um, which you know also has kind of a 40th anniversary theme. Um, and that, that is a very uh, nice looking set um, and really recreates that whole centerpiece from uh, the vintage days uh, very well. And um, v Vinny has a great way of selling his sets as well. He has got a great knack for words and uh, his posts always make me laugh. Uh, I think they also did the Warriors set, the Star Warriors, which is actually kind of a follow up to their Star Warriors four piece set from Chicago. Uh, but this time it's kind of had all the other different gangs from New York in the, uh, in the set, uh, which is great. Um, and then finally, I think the, the Illuminati set that uh, I guess a lot of the bootleg collectors have made. So all three of those I thought were great designs um, that tied in really well. So th those three definitely on my radar. Um, things that definitely out of the box type swag always catch your eye. Um, the DC set with the pennants. Yeah. Um, that's something I don't think anybody has ever done. Um, yeah. And those look great. Uh, and very colorful. Um, the Pennsylvania set with the uh, Empire Strikes Back wax packs, also a very striking set, lots of different character designs, um, great color. Bill Cable, of course, designed a lot of those and uh, you know they, they look great. Um, let's see what else? The Vader cases? Of course, the Vader cases are, are incredible, especially the, the prototype one. Uh, I thought that was a great idea that they're doing. Um, it's almost come like full circle for their group too, because the initial, the initial um, patch that they did was a Vader case. Um, can't remember if that was Orlando or before that may have been Anaheim 2015. Yeah. And so this, they've kind of redone that Vader case with new characters, but then they came up with a prototype gold Vader case with, you know, unproduced characters or you know, bootleg characters, which I thought was genius. Um, so th that's, that's another set. That's going to be a tough one to complete with there's so many different characters in the, in two cases, you know, in the previous, previous celebration, just completing one of those cases was hard, but now two. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, another one I really love is the, the, uh, the record, the record patches. Um, that have the read along records. Oh yeah, and I think uh, Kevin Lentz and uh, came up with that idea, and he also has done some coins that go along with that set as well. I'm one of the sponsors of the, the Jedi Return of the Jedi uh, record coin, um, but that's a great a great idea and a great tie in. And one thing I really I love some of the bonus pieces that people come up with. Um, and they came up with like a, a patch tote, which resembles the record tote that was released for the read along records mm. um, back in the day. So I thought that was a great tie in um, as well. So I'm sure I'm missing. Um, yeah, there's, 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 the, uh, there's the action, the action figure three packs patch set. Oh, uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, I, I always forget Rob because Rob always, Rob and I collaborate on a lot of things and, uh, uh, he, he's, he's always, he, he probably works harder on swag than anybody, me included. Um, he's already hard at work on the next celebration swag as we speak. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, he, the Northeast, um, Star Wars collector club always comes up with great designs. So the, you know, the Empire Strikes Back three packs, um, 
are part of their group's um, projects. Uh, his micro pins, of course, uh, are always a big, um, a big thing to, to try to collect. They're, he essentially makes pins that are the same size as the micro collection figures. And this time he's doing an, a, an unproduced set um, in which there were no actual micro figures made other than you know four ups or even just design models. And so he has to come up with colors and scale for these pins. So it's a much more difficult project than he's done before. Um, but yeah, it's an incredible looking set. I think he's doing the Death Star, Death Star and Death Star 2 kind of unproduced micro set. Ah, uh, let's there's see. There's the Boba <laughs> T one too. Uh, that was inspired by the, by the R patch, right? I'd like to think it was. I don't know if it really I thought was, I saw but... somewhere that they said something like, yeah, it was inspired by, but I could be making that up. Who knows? Yeah, but it's a great design set in and of itself. I guess it's a bounty hunter Boba T set. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, I think, the, one of the an initial ones released, you know, earlier uh, after Celebration was announced to be going forward. And so I think that one got a lot of kind of early... Um, uh, early buzz, um, you know, of the swag that was announced. A lot of things obviously have been announced in the last month here. So um, I think what else? There are definitely a few other things that I'm missing here, but the. You also um, have a separate set, uh, the Swag Hunter set. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I was just thinking group group patches at this point, yeah. but we can talk about individual let's, let's stuff. Let's get to that in a minute, Jason. I'll find yeah. another question going into that. But um, fine. I know. So, okay, so let's see. We've talked about the Pennsylvania Black yeah. Smacks, the DC Penance, the Twin Suns Brewery, the Empire Strikes Back Centerpiece, Star Warriors, Illuminati. Um, uh, um, there's been a lot of um, well, just I think we mentioned the the coins, the uh, the. Um, the record coins, but there's actually been, including the coin that I'm going to do, a lot of kind of Osborne made Power of the Four stock coins at this celebration, which is a great thing because I'm that's one of my fo vintage focus collecting areas. So that's great to see. Oh, the, there's the, the the Disney set, the kind of the the Mickey Mouse twelve back kind of character set that I think a lot of the Midwest members are doing. Um, I think Kentucky based, I believe. So. Um, oh, and the Tuscan Traders guys, um, Christy and Mike Larson. I think they're doing that military, military patch set and the baked goods set as well. Yeah, I think that was the other one I uh, I there's definitely also, noticed. And those, there's also that Clone Wars and the patches and pin set that I think Christine Shook is um, the the um, coordinator for. And uh, that that also is a very nice looking set. Yeah, there's it also combines that, two things. So that uh, mouse ears one, where it's the the watercolor image on the twelve back, but they all have mouse ears. Right, that's the one I was just mentioning. The twelve back oh, kind of Disney Disney set. So cool. Um, but yeah, I think those for the and of course there's the 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 multi club set, the the, the Luke and the Rancor. Mm -hmm. It's going to be given out at the tables, and you know we're we're completely missing the medallion set that, that Rob has worked so hard on, uh, which is Phil Echo Base, which is probably the largest set um, and probably the most premium of the group multi group sets. And we're going to be involved with one of those medallions at our table, um, which is Leia Hoth. Um, but that's that's going to be a very challenging set to complete given the size of it and. Again, uh, making coins costs a lot more than making patches. So um, mm -hmm. to, to complete that set and to get that made, I, I think uh, is a feat that, uh, that Rob and, and Ralph and uh, Jimmy Barcelino uh, have been able to pull off. So kudos to them. And I'm glad they got a, finally got a collector table as well. They mm -hmm. were very well deserving. So my, so those my are the question. those are the group the group ones that I'm that I'm that come to my mind. There's also I think Josh Phillips has a Tatooine puzzle patch set as well. Um, and there's an Ewoks I think that Will Crake is involved with um, animated Ewoks series. So 
So my question, Narayan, is what do you find, what, what kind of patches do you like, like the patch sets? Do you like, do you like collecting a puzzle patch or do you like doing like what we're doing where it's a set and if you miss one, you don't have a complete set, but you still can display it, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Um, I think I, we've talked about this before, but I've, the more and more I've seen, uh, you know, at celebrations, I've, if I had to make a choice, and of course I'd like to get it all, but <laughs> if I have to make a choice, um, is, um, is the themed patch sweat, the uh, patch sets. So things that where there'd be an individual design to the patch, it doesn't necessarily have to tie into a puzzle. Um, but it would still be, it, it could still be part of a overall, um, uh, set, like for example, uh, our, you know, our, our ice cream set would fall into that category, you know, where it has multiple characters, each is an individual patch, but it fits together with an overall theme, you know, for the ice cream and same thing with the, the, the brewery patches, it's a, along the same lines. Um, but yeah, things like the record patches, you know, when people tie it into kind of a known vintage collectible, I think that has an even bigger draw for me. Um, because it almost pays homage to that. Um, so I, I just thought the, you know, the one that when they made the record patches in the shape of the records, and then they made a tote for that, um, was, you know, was inspired. Um, so things like that, that, that always uh, catches my eye. Things that, um, when people come up with the designs that have not been done before, um, for example, like the DC pennants, um, that's always a cool thing too, because I think it inspires people to do different things. Um, I think the year that people did a bunch of bottle caps, nobody had done that before. And that inspired me to kind of do that, um, you know, going forward. So uh, anytime someone does something different, I think that's always good um, for swag as well. All right, and I think we've got to wrap it up in a minute because Jason's got to go. But um, how much swag are you bringing out? Do you have how big is your suitcase of swag that you are bringing out the celebration? Uh, it's two suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's not all swag. Of course, I have to bring my costume um, and Kim Tono for the the Will Row Hood run. Um, but um, yeah, literally one whole, my clothes are all in a carry-on. So all, the rest of that is a combination of my personal swag, things that I'm part of other sponsor groups, um, you know, including our own ice cream set. Um, and then some, some of the table stuff, um, some of the table um, giveaways that we'll have for the, the Georgia Alliance, some of that um, I will have with me in my suitcase. Some will also be shipped. Um, but the, the thing that takes up the most room, I think, are the, the containers. And that's the other thing I feel like when we have to talk about swag is you always got to figure out how are we going to get it there. So you can come up with all these ideas, but like if it's not in a way that we can transport it easily, it makes it that much harder. Um, but, you know, I think the, I've had to split those containers, of course, amongst several of you uh, to help me get them all there. So, um, yep. But yeah, yeah so had, it's. But those I are probably going to next to the Plinko board. Those are going to be the most challenging things to get to to Anaheim. So. Yeah, but I'm glad we're going to be able to get a lot over there. I think the more we can yeah. get into people's hands, the better. So. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about the individual things that I've that have caught my eye too. If you wanted to talk about that, um, yeah, I know we talked a lot about it at the group swag, but. Um, uh, Let's see a few that just come to mind. Victor Zurg always comes up with great designs. Part of it because I think he uses Richard as well for his artwork. Um, so he's got a great looking challenge coin and patch. I think one has kind of a, a Disney, uh, or one has the Razor Crest, I believe, and the other one has like uh, Grogu surfing uh, or something like that. And yeah. um, uh, I've noticed a lot of great uh, Clone Wars and ah Ahsoka patches, Clifton Boggs, and a few other people are doing. Um, Craig Boyce, uh, who always does great swag, um, he's, I think he, he runs um, Enamel Empire or something on Instagram, but 
he's made a great holiday special patch. And I don't know if you guys have, have a chance to see that one, but it's actually a two piece patch. One is like Boba and the other one's Chewbacca and, and the droids. Um, that's a great looking design. Um, Bill Cable has a great two piece puzzle set, um, which uses, um, I think the Walrus Man and is it Greedo? And it, it, it basically um, is the slap, which was made famous at the Oscars, <laughs> which is, I thought was great. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. You've um, got your, well, we can go back to it now. The, your swag. Oh, my swag. Yeah. So my individual swag, we've, I'm, um, one of the ideas I had, you know, this was a, a set that I had um, an idea for, you know, very early on in uh, 20, um, you know, right after Celebration Chicago. And uh, the person who designed my um, collection logo, uh, George Baeza, um, he, he's great for making a lot of caricatures of things. And I'd had him make a caricature of me, you know, on a, in a Boba Fett outfit before. And I thought since it was the 40th anniversary of Empire, you know, why don't we do a set of Boba patches in different outfits? Um, like his prototype outfit, his holiday special, the Kenner, Kenner colors and maybe his Empire Strikes Back outfit. And so I had four of those designs made one for each day of celebration. And then there'd be a bonus patch, which at that time the Mandalorian was just coming out. So we did a Mandalorian chase patch. So yeah, that people can look for that for me. Of course, I'll have my Moss Atlanta designs uh, and swag that goes along with that. Uh, and the other big individual thing for me is the, uh, the coin. Uh, the Luke Jedi coin, which has been a, always been a dream of mine to actually make a Osborne coin and, uh, until, you know, Mark and Brock did it. I didn't realize it was even possible, um, but um, it's great. Uh, it's been great getting to know uh, Osborne coinage. Of course, they worked with us on making our club coin as well and working with Patrick Hipple, uh, the executive at Osborne that's helped us uh, make these uh, coins and uh you know i that that it's 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 just a dream that i've been able to make that unproduced luke jedi artwork into an actual physical coin and uh, it'll just i think it's just the beginning of that particular thing i think we're going to see a lot of unproduced power of the force designs coming out in the next few years and a lot of people are interested in getting on board with that particular project so But I don't know what else have you guys seen. Um, there's a lot. There's been a lot, and not everything has to be kind of a super great design. Some of it's just kind of um, it's just very creative. Um, I've seen like the somebody made the kind of Ted Lasso little signs. Yeah, that that was I thought that was really cute. Um, somebody else made that these like little buttons that had like Pelimoto um, sayings on them. Um, guitar picks. Was, Someone's guitar made the, picks. Wooden yeah. spoons with quotes on it. I'm looking through it right oh, now. Oh yeah, there was a wooden spoon, and somebody made like a wooden memory game, I believe wow. too. Oh, the yeah. Mayor Mock Shies, but it's like Mayor McCheese with a hammerhead face. <laughs> yeah, on it. and that's Vinny again. <laughs> yeah, so, that one is um, a must-have for me. Somebody made these Tuca dolls, and it's, it's amazing the, the the stuff that people come up with. Um, there was this patch, I believe somebody did like a haunted mansion um, yep. take where they have like uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu sitting in the, the, uh, the, the, the ride, um, the ride car, but behind them is a ghost, you know, as, as you see at the very last part of the ride. And the, the, the funny thing is the ghost is, is Quill. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought that was great. Um, the shipper boxes by Todd. Yeah, Todd's been great at getting those made. He did, I think, a different shipper box last time, but this this one's a completely new design. Um, again, out of the box. Uh, no pun intended there. <laughs> so. Kenner, Kenner Rubble by the Lemkels. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's almost kind of hilarious, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Ryan and Sean Lemkel, I think only Ryan is attending, but they, they both are going to... They, they made... A, a set of bags that are basically rubble from the run of the, um, the old Kenner uh, morgue building. You know, I guess where a lot of stuff was stored. Um, 
but when that building was destroyed, um, I think they, they, I don't know if they got some toys and other things out of that rubble, but this was just rubble that was kind of left over with that stuff. And so they've actually just put it in bags. Wow. <laughs> They're going to give that out as swag. So we can say we came home with some dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Kenner dirt. Yeah. Kenner dirt. Anything else? Cause I have to, uh, I have a hard stop here. Yeah. yeah um, I mean, there's so much, I mean, but, uh, I think we could just plug, you know, everybody go to star Wars, uh, swag crew group and you can see a lot of different things that people are bringing um and we, you know we obviously can't include everybody and in all the great things that people are bringing but that, but that's part of the fun of of celebration and meeting people and you know exchanging swag is that um you're pleasantly surprised by you know what people have and what people give you and um, sometimes it's better not to kind of know everything in advance and always be hunting sometimes it's great when it just comes to you yeah yeah um just real y'all guys are way more into this stuff than i am but like you were saying hunting and i have no clue what i was going on with the swag but uh it's a good way to meet people in 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 line most if you're looking for swag i know people wear lanyards special lanyards that say swag i know the 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 will or hood they've got badges and stuff so look for that kind of stuff uh, just start talking to people, man. It's a great way to meet people as far as that goes. Uh, I know our, our club table, you know, if you want to find any of us is, is two, eight, seven, eight is our club table. So that's going to be the home base for, for, uh, most of this stuff, you know, at least meet and greet type thing. And, uh, you know, come say hi to us while we're there, you know, come meet, come meet Narayan, come meet, you know, Jason and I come meet the Georgia crew. Uh, you know, it, it's a fun time, man. Yeah, it will be. I think it's great. Uh, one of the great things about having a club table is people know where to find you. Um, yeah. And so we will publish a schedule of all the different you know, people that are volunteering at the table and a lot of whom are our sponsors for our project. So people will know at least this person will be here at this time. And right. So maybe I can get their, their patch or their other swag at this time. And so that, that makes it a lot easier for people because it's a huge convention and trying to find people is, is difficult sometimes. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask questions and talk to people because that's one of the best things about celebration is meeting new friends. Yeah, absolutely. Come talk to us at Georgia, the Georgia table. We'll be all around the other fan table groups. So talk to all of them. There's a lot of great people, uh, a great community of friends and collectors. Um, and, uh, Again, uh, my celebration experience has shifted from things like panels and autographs to basically just hanging out with my friends. And uh, that's, you know, swag has become certainly a big part of that uh, and has contributed to that. So awesome. Yeah. Well, well should I wrap it up? Yeah, go for it. Cause yeah, yeah you're, we're two minutes. So it'll take you two yeah. minutes to read it, right? Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Smuggler's Galaxy podcast. You will leave a five-star review. Anywhere you listen to the show <laughs> really helps us out and points people to us. Follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Send us an email or message us. We always love feedback, and we'd love to make you part of the show. Our email is smugglersgalaxy at gmail.com. Thank you to Alfonso Riviera for the Smugglers Galaxy logo. You can find him at, on Facebook as Puerto Rico Star Wars. And thank you to Levi Waterhouse for the music. Hasbro re-release VC66, hashtag vote with your wallet. Pass on what you've learned. Be a positive, uh, why am I messing up? Be a positive force in the collecting <laughs> community. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Hey, Jason, are you going to give you and McGregor one of your patches when you meet him? I thought about that, but then it would just end up in the garbage, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe not.
<laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah.